Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Today we are going to be going over the Secura Penta. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits, meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. There would be things like war from abilities, pets putting statuses on the enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon by itself, built out, and I leave it up to the viewer to make their own intelligent conclusions about those external things that could be added. Um, things like, hey, salt put viral on the weapon, but I'm going to be using nourish, so maybe I'll use a different element. Things like that. Okay. Let us get into the Secura Penta. So the, the Secura Penta, or the Penta rather, the Penta has three versions of it. It has the Penta, it has the Carmine Penta, and it has the Secura Penta. And so um, for this build, the first thing I had to do was figure out which one I was going to build out, because they, they're all slightly different. Um, and of course, I want to build out the best one. And the best out of the three is extremely obvious when you look at the stats, and that's the Secura Penta. So the, the other two, the Carmine and the regular Penta, unfortunately, they start with really, really low status and crit chance. Um, the Secura Penta starts with like two and a half times the amount of status and crit chance they do. The only negative about the Secura Penta is it starts with extremely slightly less flat damage but just a little bit less flat damage where it has a lot more crit and status chance so it's pretty obvious that the secura penta is the best choice um and the penta the secura penta also has the secura effect which is from the parent sequence parent sequence um which does extra stuff as well whereas the other ones you don't get that okay so it's a primary grenade launcher this is a weapon that I thought was absolute, you know, dog crap for a very long time. Until today, really. Until I built it out today and I was like, huh, this is uh, weirdly very good. So let's get into the build here. <clears throat> okay. So the, it's going to shoot a grenade. And normally the grenade does not explode. You have to actually um, middle click, alternate click basically, for it to explode. Um, and so that kind of makes it a slower weapon because you have to, you know, keep pri uh, primary shooting, alternate clicking to detonate the uh, grenade. Um, there's a few augments for the Penta that you can use to, like, stop that, but that's how it functions normally. The other thing about the Penta is that it can never have more than five grenades out at a time. If you try to get more than five grenades out at a time, it'll just straight up stop you from shooting. And if you are just under five grenades and shoot another shot, it'll neuter that shot to not have it, like have its multi-shot basically, because you can only have five grenades out at a time. Um, that's not really gonna be an issue for us. We're gonna be producing 3.3 um, every time we shoot. So that's gonna be three guaranteed and then a 30% uh, chance to produce a fourth. So we don't have that uh, concern. Um, and that's really it. I'm going to show the augments that the Penta has, because the Penta has a lot of augments, actually. Uh, I thought it had three of them. Am I missing one of them? Tether and Daypalm, and I thought it had one that uh, stuck somewhere. Okay, I, I don't know if I'm like missing one or something. But that's fine. So it has uh, a few augments here. It has tether grenades. Now, uh, grenades tether enemies up to tether five enemies from nine meters away. The reason I don't like this on testing, the tether is extremely slow. It yanks enemies so slowly that sometimes you can't even see them moving. Uh... Like, if you've ever used the, the Tenant uh, Ferox, it's very similar to that, where they just move extremely slow to the center. So, I mean, if you're willing to wait three to five seconds for enemies to slowly move towards the center where the grenade is, this could be an option, but I, I don't... I think that's a little bit meme -y. I don't think it's actually a good option. Um, the other one that I don't know where it is... I'm actually very confused about this. Um... There's another one that makes it stick. Oh, you know what? It's probably because I have um, this on. Let me see here. 
No. Oh, interesting. So there's one that makes it uh, stick instead of bouncing because the, the Secura Penta actually bounces. That's also not a very good one. If Even if you weren't going to use napalm grenades, which I'll get to, um, a lot of times you're air bursting the Penta. You're not actually like caring that it hits the ground and bounces. Like a lot of times you're actually air bursting it. And it does more damage that way. It's a little bit easier to shoot that way. <clears throat> and so uh, that's why. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so that's not a good option either. And now the third augment is this one here, napalm grenades. And this is the one we're going to use. It's a very, very strong augment. So napalm grenades, it grenades leave a burning patch on impact. So there's a little patch of fire on the ground. It actually doesn't do too much. It just puts heat, heat procs on enemies if they walk into it. The little patch also can't be affected by primed firestorm. So it stays a little patch. It's always going to be the same size. And you get plus 30 uh, final status chance. It's like 30% status chance, but it's not calculated exactly like regular status chance. It kind of is, but it's kind of not. It, it was honestly so confusing. I just kind of gave up on trying to figure out exactly how it was calculated. Um, but just know that it gives you a little bit of status chance. Now, the reason I'm using it, because everything I just said doesn't sound very interesting. The reason I'm using it is, is it gives you a gigantic heat uh, stat on the, on the weapon. So if I uh, pull up heat here, because the first thing I thought, I said, well, this only gives you 30 status chance and, you know, the grenade effect eh, just puts a little bit of fire on the enemies if they walk into it even. And it's a small effect. Um, so the first thing I thought, I was like, well, why don't I just use thermite rounds? But if you look here, napalm grenades, it has us at 325 and 325 for heat. If I switch this, if I switch to thermite rounds, I think I have to move these over. Okay. Well, if I switch to thermite rounds... Oh my goodness, what's going on this morning? Okay, rhyme, looking at the third bit. Okay, so if I switch to thermite rounds, look at that. That 325 goes down to 45. And that 325 on the radial goes down to 180. So this, the napalm grenades is giving us like, I don't know, like eight times effect on the direct damage and like double the effect on the radial. So napalm grenades gives us a gigantic heat uh, status. So that's why I'm going to be using it over uh, thermite rounds. So let me fix all these up again here. Napalm grenades there, thermal velocity there. That should be everything. Okay. So let's get into the mods now. Now for the mods, we're going to be using galvanized chamber for multi-shot. Um, when this is at its maximum uh, stacks, you're going to be at 3.3, uh, which is three grenades and a 30% chance to produce a fourth grenade, which is great. Primed Firestorm is going to increase your blast radius. This weapon has a pretty respectable blast radius, so Prime Firestorm is a pretty good candidate to use on this weapon. Critical Delay for crit chance. Vital Sense for crit damage. Hunter Munitions is going to have a 30% chance to uh, switch your criticals into um, slashes. Well, not switch. It just adds a slash on a critical 30% of the time. So because of Prime Firestorm, because we're going to have a really big blast radius, and because we mostly are in yellow crits, there's going to be a little bit of whites, but we're mostly in yellow crits, um, we're going to get a lot of slash um, applied to enemies in, an, in a big AoE, which is really nice. And because... Um, this is not like a little dinky assault rifle. Like it's a grenade launcher and it has pretty respectable damage numbers. We're going to get pretty respectable size slash procs. And so Hunter Munitions is also a very good candidate for this weapon. We're using Napalm Grenades, which is the Penta-specific augment. Um, I explained that one already. And then we're using Viral. So we're going to switch. We're going to turn... Um, what am I saying here? We're using <laughs> Malignant Force, which is the 60-60 Toxin, and then Rhyme Rounds, which is the 60-60 Cold, to make Viral. Um, just remember, in Whispers content, Viral's pretty bad. You'd probably want to switch to Corrosive for Whispers. Outside of Whispers, though, Viral is going to be the best general element. And then the Exilus slot, um, there's a few options here. 
so the eggsless slot, two out of three of the, and again, I don't know where the other one went. Did I like delete it maybe? I'm not really sure. Was it sitting on, I don't know. Um, but two out of three of the uh, augments are eggsless mods. So you could actually use tether grenades and the other one, which I don't know where the hell that one went. Um, you could use that as uh, your eggsless. <clears throat> it's just that they're very weak and they don't really do too much. So I'm going to be using terminal velocity. It increases projectile speed. Um, it's not really going to be, it doesn't really do anything for fall off for radial weapons. Like terminal velocity is good on shotguns because the, it increases the fall off on shotguns. But on radial weapons, it doesn't actually do that. Um, but without terminal velocity, this weapon shoots its little grenade out like really pitifully. It kind of just does like a little pop and it like, you know, lands 10 feet in front of you. It's, it's, it's really pitiful. And so terminal velocity lets you have a little bit more medium range capabilities. So I really, really like terminal velocity on this. So um, the other option, though, would be those um, augment mods for the uh, Penta. I don't know if you can use them together, though. Actually, that's a good question. Let's see. Now nah, I guess you can. Um, I think you can use the, the sticky one with napalm grenades, though. But again, I have no idea where that one went. Uh, and then a uh, ammo mutation mod. You can also use an ammo mutation mod with this if you think you're going to have ammo issues. I don't believe this weapon will have ammo issues, so I'm not going to be going with it. I'm going to be going with terminal velocity instead. In the arcane, we're going to be using primary merciless. This is going to give us a little bit more reload speed, and it's going to give us 360% flat damage. So uh, there's not a huge reason to use deadhead um, because you're not going to be going for headshots. That being said, I actually weirdly made a headshot build for this Kira Penta, and it did quite well. Um, but I thought it was a little bit disingenuous to make this video with it. So I had, uh, when I was building this out this morning, I built this build first. And something also about napalm grenades is that napalm grenades makes the grenade explode instantly. Once it contacts something, it will explode. So you no, you no longer have to um, middle click to detonate your grenade. And so that got me thinking. I said, well... Now I can actually make a headshot pen to build. And so what I did was I changed pr uh, Primed Firestorm into um, Galvanized Scope. And it worked. It worked. Galvanized Scope. Uh, hey, Colonel, what's up? How you doing this morning? Galvanized Scope worked on the Secure Penta because you can get headshot kills with it. And you can stack Galvanized Scope. The thing is, is I was testing it on a Grenier map. Grenier is very easy to get headshots on. And I, I think it, it it makes it into an orange crit weapon instead of a yellow with some white still. So, like, it is better with Galvanized Scope. But I thought making a video with Galvanized Scope would be a little bit disingenuous. Because I think normally this is going to be very hard to get your stacks on. So... So I think Prime Firestorm is the is the better one, but Galvanized Scope does technically work with uh, this Penta that explodes on on contact. And then um, finally, with this build here, is the unique trait of the um, Secura effect or the the Perrin sequence effect, which is called sequence, I guess. So after you get a certain amount of affinity, I believe it's a thousand affinity, um, it's going to trigger a radiation explosion. The actual damage is pretty doo-doo. It's got really, really bad damage. But you still get the radiation effect. So when that happens, all of a sudden, you know, a bunch of enemies get the radiation effect. They start shooting at each other because that's what radiation does. Um, and it also is going to restore 25% of your base shields. And it increases your maximum shield capacity by 50%. Again, that's base shields for 30 seconds. So that's a 30-second buff. So this, is, this would be really good on shield frames. Um, just remember it's base shield. So like if you have a Hildren and modded out, that Hildren has 10,000 shields, it's not going to give you 2,500. It's going to give you 25% um, or 50%, sorry. It's going to give you 50% of her base shields before being modded out. And the same thing with restoring her shields. It's going to restore 25% of her base. So... Okay, so that's the Secura effect. That's only going to happen on the Secura Penta, not the regular Penta and not the Carmine Penta. So, and that's pretty much it for the build here. 
what I'm going to do, um, because I don't like to mix this with any kind of external factors, I'm just going to do this on a big dumb on Naros with no Archon shards that increase weapon performance. No mods on the Anaros that increase weapon performance. And a pet with no sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that increase weapon performance. That way the viewer can just make their own intelligent conclusions about adding external things on this. So we'll do a 10 minute um, Kuva survival on Steel Path. Show this off. So before I start this, this is how it looks. You shoot, and it, it puts a little, like, uh, fire thing on the ground. Now, again, that, that fire area can't be increased by Prime Firestorm. So even though we have Prime Firestorm on, that's what it would look like even without Prime Firestorm. Now, this grenade that explodes on contact, you can still airburst it. So I could still choose to uh, alternate fire... Um, whenever I want to, like while it's in the air. Um, I'm not really going to be doing that. I'm just going to be letting it contact enemies, but that, it's an option. So once in a while during this, you're going to see me press my three button. All that does is it gives me status immunity and armor. It doesn't affect uh, uh, weapon performance. So let's start this up here. As expected, Grineer have shut down the environmental systems, sending modified life support capsules. Now every every weapon's going to start pretty weak until you get your conditionals up. So let's uh, let's get some stacks of merciless up here. So I, I was under the assumption uh, with the Penta, I had it's one of the weapons I actually had left in my inventory, not built out for a very long time, until this morning basically. And during my time leveling this weapon, it was absolutely horrible, and I, I just assumed that it was a, a complete garbage tier weapon. Um, but I assumed wrong. Built out like this, it's actually quite good. And for anyone that doesn't know, um, sec the Secura weapons, the weapons that have the Perrin Sequence effect, you need to get them from the Perrin Sequence um, with standing. So uh, you'll either have to farm up rep if you're with the Perrin Sequence, or you might be able to trade, like if you're in, let's say, Red Veil, you might be able to trade a Perrin Sequence person, like a Red Veil weapon for, for his uh, Secura Penta, because they are tradable. And this will still this will actually do pretty decent damage against um, eggs misses, mostly because of the slash procs. Although I I got I guess I got quite unlucky there. I didn't get that many slash procs on that guy initially. I did not test this against the acolyte, so the acolyte fight might be a little bit interesting when we get to it. I think it'll do pretty good though. I don't think this is going to be you know like a. a one shot, two shot, three shot acolyte killer. I think we're gonna have to hit him a few times, but I don't think it's gonna be that bad. I think it's gonna be pretty good. And if you look in the bottom right, there's a little upside down triangle. That is the parent sequence effect. When it's full and it's being like drained away, uh, it means that I was. I have triggered it, and it's it's basically like counting the buff down, I guess. And then after 30 seconds, when that buff ends, I'm able to trigger it again. So like right now, it's empty, and I think if I start getting kills and affinity, you'll see that little triangle start filling up. And when it fills up, it's going to trigger that radial uh, radiation explosion, and then I'll have that 30 second buff again. And see now it's now it's draining again. It's counting that 30 seconds down.
the syndicate effects are, are very small. They, they don't do a lot, but they're they're just extra. They're, they're kind of a nice extra to have on the weapon that you don't actually have to put like a mod on it for. So, of course, the Perrin sequence, sequence effect is shield focused and I'm playing a Naros. So it literally does nothing for me. So, but on a uh, regular Warframe that has shields or on a shield frame, it would be really good. You just kind of get some free shield regeneration and shield capacity uh, increase buffs. change our location. It's just getting a little boring to sit in the uh, hallway there. Let's move over to that first set of life sports and see where that that area is. Acolyte coming. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I honestly didn't think the Penta was good either until this morning. I Someone suggested it, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I got to do a video on the Penta. It's going to be so painful. This thing's going to be so garbage. Because I, I leveled it, and during leveling, it was painful. Like, it wasn't really that good in leveling it. Um, but then once I put the proper mods on this morning, I was like, huh, th this thing is, is weirdly good. I, I had no idea it could be like this until this morning. You know, it's not going to beat like some of the, the top tier in Karn and weapons, of course. But it still is quite good. Yeah, with a Shield Warframe, you get that 50% capacity, which is a buff that lasts for 30 seconds. And um, you can basically have 100% uptime on that buff because you can re-trigger the effect every 30 seconds. Well, I guess almost 100% uptime on the buff. Not, not exactly 100%. And then you also get like the 25% uh, shield recharge when it happens, which is nice. The, the, secure, the Penta, well, the Secura too, but like any Penta really, uh, the Penta has... I've heard very good um, combo potential with mag. Now, I'm not a mag player, so I can't say for sure. It's just what I've heard. Um, when this goes on YouTube, if anyone is a mag player, make sure to let us know in the comments. But I've heard on mag, it has very good combo potential um, with her, like, little bubble, because you can just kind of, like, shoot grenades in there, and they'll just kind of bounce around and, like, hit a dude over and over. Seven and a half minutes. This is doing quite well. I haven't... I don't think I've hit a single life sport. I might hit one, though, because I'm at 60 right now. Let me get up to 90, at least. And if you've noticed, like, the, when you shoot the ground, it leaves a little puddle on the ground. But actually, if you shoot a dude directly, it'll leave a puddle in the air, too. So you don't have to worry about, like, not getting the puddle if you shoot a guy. Because the puddle will, like, literally levitate in the air like this. The actual puddle effect is, is kind of, like, meh, though. It doesn't do a... I, I don't think it does damage, and if it does, it's extremely low. It does apply uh, heat status effects, though. So it's just, it's just extra ways to spread status if people walk into it. Oh. 
and once in a while you'll see these guys just start shooting at each other and that's because of the uh, radi the syndicate radiation effect that that goes out like once every 30 seconds So with terminal velocity, I mean, this is, like, kind of how it shoots. Without terminal velocity, it's very, like, pitiful. It's, like, a little... It'll, like, land, like, right there without terminal velocity. That's why I really like terminal velocity in the Exilus slot. It makes it a little bit more uh, valid for, like, medium-range shooting. You know, this thing's never going to be, like, a, a long-range sniper. But it, it makes it a little bit more valid for medium-range. And I haven't had any ammo issues, so I don't I don't believe I would have need, needed to, um, like, use an ammo... Uh, Exilus mod, like an ammo supply one. I'm gonna recast my three and get myself a little bit more armor. Oh, we're actually almost we're almost done. We got 15 seconds. Let's boost our kills up a little bit. All right, 10 minutes. We're at 680 kills. I, I did not think I would see the day where the uh, the Penta was getting close to incarnate weapons and actually beat some incarnate weapons that I've tested. That is That makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit, but uh, I guess it is what it is. Like, literally, for the past, like, four years I've been playing this game nonstop, I've just been under the assumption that Penta was garbage. And then I built it out this morning. Someone suggested it. Um, I think it was Sticks from the clan. Sticks suggested it. And I was like, oh, it's painful. You're going to make me do the Penta. And so I started building it out this morning. I did some research on the wiki of like what it does and everything. And um, yeah, I was, I was, I mean, I, I was still like, okay, it's probably not going to be that great. And yeah, I mean, 680 kills. Oof. A like when I do this test, average weapons usually are like 350 to 400. And average weapons would be things like the Kuva Carrick, the Kuva Hind, uh, Tenant Flux Rifle. Like basic assault rifles, usually you get like 350 to 400. Uh, I'm going to do a quick test on Lua co uh, Conjunction as well. This is just, they're going to be higher level enemies at 180 to 200. They're going to be mixed enemies, so they're not all going to be Grenier. And um, it's going to force me to fight Thraxes, which are kind of like Super Eximuses. Now on Lua Conjunction, you are expecting to get a little bit less kills because enemies are, are higher and you spend more time fighting uh, bigger guys. Um, every weapon's going to start off pretty crappy until you get your conditionals up. So these two Drac Masters are going to be like mini-bosses for me here. Because of course I have no conditionals up. And they stole my weapon. Alright. So I'm going to cast my three to get some armor and status immunity. And that's the only button I'm going to be pressing as far as Warframe abilities go. And we'll start this off here. The Oricon Neural Sentry is attempting to purge you from this place. Stand by for life support. We're going to try to fight like in this area here because we have the life supports right behind us if we need them. Sometimes you, you need them in Lua Conjunction. Just remember that the Secura Penta is the one that has better uh, crit and status chance. I don't think this build would even be viable on the other Pentas. Because the other Pentas, the Carmine and the regular Penta, 
their status and crit chance is so low, I don't even know if you would get into yellow crits. Or it would you, you would get into yellow crits, but it would it would be so infrequent. Where this one it's mostly yellows with a few white non crits sprinkled in. So this build is really for the Secura Penta. The the regular and the Carmine, I mean it would still probably be okay, but it's it's not gonna be anywhere near as strong as the Secura. Uh, the Napalm mod? Ooh, that's a good question. So I think two out of three, maybe even three out of three of them, I think most of them come from Index. So when you do Index, like when you kill those uh, like little fighters on Index, um, they a lot of them drop like the gold mods. And I think at least two out of three of them come from Index. Maybe even all three of them. I, don't, I can't remember if all three of them come from Index. Um... So that I'm not really too sure about. Uh, when this goes on YouTube, if anyone in the comments knows for sure, make sure you, you let me know. I know like Tether Grenades is indexed. I think the Sticky one that I can't find for some reason, I think that's also indexed. I don't know if the Napalm one is also indexed though. The other two augments though are kind of booty. Like they're, they're not really that great, the other augments. Uh, the Sticky one's not great because like... On that build, you're probably just going to be air bursting it. You're not actually. Um, oh shit! He stole my weapon again, right in a row. I hate these track masters. You're going to be air bursting it, so you're not really going to be like caring that it hits the ground. You know, you're just going to kind of be shooting above people's heads and air bursting it, kind of like this. Man. Um, I don't need to do that on this build because this this build with the napalm will blow up on contact, so I don't have to worry about air bursting this. But with the sticky augment, you're probably going to be air bursting it. So you don't really give a shit that it's sticky or not. And the tether, the problem with the tether augment is it tethers so slowly. It pulls enemies in so slowly that it's almost not even working. <laughs> enemies were being tethered so slow that I couldn't even tell they were moving sometimes. So out of the three augments, I believe um, the Napalm is really the only viable one. And it's a very viable one. This is very strong. Acolyte coming here. We're going to try to get him down before the Thraxes come. Because fighting him and the Thraxes at the same time can sometimes be a little bit dangerous. But violence. As you can see, this does pretty good damage against the Acolyte, too. Yep, we got him down. Got him down, uh, like, what, like 15 seconds. That was actually pretty good. It's not going to be the best Acolyte killer, but I mean, it killed him pretty freaking good. Right, we got Thraxis here. Should be pretty good against the Thraxis because of uh, heat procs and hunter munitions. We're gonna make sure we're killing trash in between two to make sure we have our uh, merciless stacks not falling off. All right, we got the acolytes down. Let's go hit some life supports. Uh, the Thraxes, or not the Acolytes, we got the Thraxes down. The uh, Thraxes, while they're up, they suck your life support, so they can they can kind of hurt, leaving them up for too long. That's why if you ever get Thraxes and the Acolyte coming at the same time, you want to focus on Thraxes first. So I'm going to kill some enemies, and then I'm probably going to head to that first set of life supports. Or second set of life supports, I should say. I 
we even lost a little bit of merciless stacks. Let's try to get him back up with you guys. Oh, we're actually out of ammo here. So that's the first time we ran out of ammo. I'm going to use a uh, ammo pad. I think it's just because we kind of lost enemy density. I don't know where all the uh, enemies have gone to. I think, oh, they're in this hallway fighting each other. That's uh, Lewis Circulus, unfortunately. The enemies are really bad with their pathing, and they start fighting each other even though they're all corrupted for some reason. Maybe they're fighting the sentients. I also think the Drac Masters, when they summon the Dracs, they're not counted as corrupted, so they start beating the shit out of the dogs. Alright, I'm going to head to that set of life supports. We'll try to get these enemies to Congo line towards us. That way we can farm some yellow life supports up here. Hopefully. Hopefully they don't, they don't stay back there uh, beating the shit out of each other. But they probably will. Try to meet them halfway and farm some yellows. I think. I hope they're not all in that first room though back there. The spawns on this map are really are so bad. I've actually considered not using this map as like one of my testers. I've considered switching this map up to something different. Because a lot of times strong weapons will will fail on this map, not because of the weapon itself, just because you're fighting to try to get the spawns to come to you because they're too busy fighting each other. Cast my three, get myself some armor and status immunity. Fill it up. Probably at nine minutes and 30 seconds, we'll head to the uh, third set of life sports. And then fight the Thraxes in that location. And then that'll be it. That'll be it for this, uh, this run through. Acolyte coming. Ugh, I probably do want to be near a life support while I'm fighting them. But I'm going to lose all my uh, merciless stacks too. Maybe I don't want to be there. I want to be near the trash so I can get my merciless stacks while I'm killing them. And if I try to move to that area, the, the uh, trash is going to take so long to go there. Alright, Acolyte's dead. Very good Acolyte killer. to that set of life sports, maybe. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to stay here. I think I might run out of uh, air, but I think even if I go there and get those life sports, I'll run out of air, because I won't have um, a little trash to kill. So, this may fail the 10-minute test, but I, I think it's more of the, the a map issue than the weapon. So we're out of air there. Um, I'm going to finish off these uh, Thraxes, though. All right. We'll head to Extraction. So in 10 minutes, we got almost 500 kills. Uh, you do expect to get a little bit less than uh, you did in Kuba Survival, just because you spend more time fighting um, Thraxes, bigger dudes. So that's about right. So first one, we got 680. This one, we got 500. That is still well above average, and this is a very powerful weapon, weirdly. I did not think that I was going to find this out today. You are a blade. You exist to strike. You strike to win. The lesson ends.
All right, so Secure Penta, um, well above average weapon. I It's definitely worth um, getting, definitely worth building out. It, it surprised me by a large margin today. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's pretty much it. That's the video. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys uh, liked it, and you guys have a good day.